I don't deal with awkward situations very well. Not, not at all, actually. Like, if you've ever watched the U.S. office, I can't even begin to watch the episode Scott's Tots. I am forced to leave the room even when I'm watching it by myself because the awkwardness makes me so uncomfortable that I actually have to remove myself from the situation. I also have been known to look away, pretend to go to the bathroom, or bury my face in a blanket when a particularly awkward scene happens to come on in any movie or TV show. I am not somebody that enjoys an awkward situation. It is actually probably my greatest phobia, which means if I was Xavi, the head coach of Barcelona, I would currently be trying to vanish, maybe a vacation to the Faroe Islands or something again, to avoid the situation that he is now found himself in because the managerial market when it comes to who's going to be the new manager of your football club 2024 has taken a really serious turn for one Xabi Alonso the a plus hire for everybody has said that he's not leaving and employed by Florentino Perez it seems from Real Madrid to be able to land him as the manager after next season which means that there is no a plus hire there's guys like Roberto de Serbi around that are probably going to end up being moved above their station but he's certainly a solid coach got to prove he can do it outside of Brighton uh, in, in Shakhtar, which are teams that are very, very well run. But I, I look, I think De Serbi's a good coach. It's just that Xabi Alonso is the A-plus hire, and Barcelona is not perhaps as attractive a job as they thought. And by they, I mean Jean Laporta, the guy who is a large contributing factor in Barcelona being unbelievably mudded financially at the moment. Now, that financial situation is definitely a contributing factor here. But let me give you the 411, the, the lore on what exactly has happened. So earlier this year, Xavi, who spent years as the presumptive manager for Barcelona, it was like known. I knew it, and I'm not somebody in the know, that Xavi was going to be the next coach at Barcelona, right? He, I, I, I don't even remember... Uh, who was the coach at Barcelona before Xavi, but Xavi was managing in the Saudi League or the Qatari Stars League or something, and his side was playing excellent Barcelona-style, tickying the taka all over the place. And the, uh, the, everybody's palate was, wa like, mouths were watering that Xavi was going to arrive. And Xavi did arrive at Barcelona. And not only did he arrive at Barcelona as somebody in his early 40s who had, you know, uh, uh, potentially a ton of time left to be the coach of the team, he delivered a league title in spite of Barcelona's crippling financial situation that seems to only be getting worse because they have the same sort of spending addiction that a gambler betting on Tajikistani ping pong at 2 a.m. in Las Vegas has, where they can't stop spending money even though they have no more money. Granted, a six-leg parlay on Tajikistani, or I believe it's Tajik ping pong, would be, in, I mean, if you hit, you could totally save the mortgage and maybe even send one of your kids to college that's a tough six leg parlay maybe just don't but look i do have an in on tajik ping pong if anybody's interested please hit me up in the comments i i can sign you up for my newsletter it's 200 dollars a week and i will vanish with the money at the end of the year but barcelona is basically betting on six leg parlays and tajik ping pong in order to try and save its financial situation and as a result if i was a particularly high level manager uh with the expectations that barcelona has to win everything all the time with no ability to spend money to do so then i would probably not be as interested in that job as barcelona it's with its own, you know, rightfully so, very high opinion of itself, assuming it would be able to attract any manager that it wants. And in hindsight, looking at the fact that Xavi's produced a league-winning season and in a pretty darn competitive La Liga that involves a, a new surprise package in Girona, Atletico Madrid, uh, Real Sociedad's particularly involved this year. You've got, uh, obviously, Real Madrid, their top of the league. They've run away from Girona fairly recently. Uh, it's a pretty competitive league sis like setup. They're in fourth, right? Like Barcelona is still hanging around. I got to check my math there. We're actually all the way up into second. But at the time that Xavi dis announced that he was going to be leaving, Barcelona was, you know, was in fourth. They were doing a good job. Also, shout out to Bilbao for also having a fantastic season. They've recently given Nico Williams a new three-year contract. Their superstar uh, winger who's a regular in the Spanish national team had a bunch of Premier League teams lurking around. And I'm not talking about Iñaki, his older brother. I'm talking about Nico, just in case you mix those two dudes up. Nico plays for Spain. Iñaki plays for Ghana. The world is fun. Uh, but the, the very competitive league structure, and after Xavi announced that he was going to leave, which happened, uh, it happened after a loss to Villarreal, actually, and they fell into fourth place at that time, Barcelona's gotten better. They've shown that Xavi, while, you know, Real Madrid, 
I think by any measure, has a much better team than Barcelona does right now. Barcelona is still in second place. It's staying competitive. It's staying active in European competition, right? Like Barcelona is still in a good spot. And that is what has led to something of an about face because Barcelona's new preferred hire for its manager, as made clear by Jean Laporta, is Xavi. They they want they now they want they want Xavi to stay. Now <laughs> that is obviously a tricky tightrope to walk here because Xavi it, it came out and announced that he was going to leave at the end of the season. Right? This is similar to the Thomas Tuchel situation, but I also think it's dissimilar. It's not similar at all to Jurgen Klopp's situation because he's burnt out and looking to retire after a decade, kind of running at the top. Of the game, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. I think this is more similar to Jurgen Klopp than Tuchel. I think that if you're Tuchel, you had to negotiate that you were gonna be able to manage to the end of the season. That they didn't want to just go to a caretaker manager because Bayern Munich was ready to fire that dude, right? Launch him into the sun, out of the German Cup, getting smoked in the germ, like getting smoked in the Bundesliga by Bayer Leverkusen by 13 points, which I've talked about previously is a little harsh on Tuchel or Kane or whoever is getting dumped on at Bayern Munich because they're actually on pace. They have a very similar, if not better, number of points than they had last year. Bayer Leverkusen's just been absolutely unbelievable. That's why they're 13 points ahead. They've, I mean, they've dropped eight points all year. It's hard. You, you, if you won every game the entire season, you would be eight points ahead of Bayer Leverkusen right now. That is absurd, right? That is patently absurd. But Tuchel, you know, he had a bit of a falling out with the team as well. They probably should have never let go of Nagelsmann over there. But he kind of just went, well, oh, keep me to the end of the season. It's been kind of better for both of us, whatever. Jurgen Klopp burned out and is leaving. Xavi burned out a lot faster because when he announced that he was going to leave, it wasn't entirely clear that Barcelona was going to fire him, although there was sort of that dust was being kicked up, right? There was no fire, but there was a little smoke. You know, the fire just needed a few more <gasps> for it to actually start up. And that would have been a couple, you know, those each one of those breaths would be like a loss to a team that you're not supposed to lose to. But there, were, there was by no means this giant movement for Xavi to be expelled. After all, he's one of Barcelona's own, right? Xavi is one of... Uh, he's one of the chosen midfielders, well, you know, like from that golden generation where Barcelona was the best team, the most talented team in the world, right? It was Iniesta, it was Busquets, it was Xavi, right? And, and all three of those guys kind of get mixed up together when you're trying to figure out who is better than who or whatever. And it, it, it's... It, 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 I'm getting lost. I'm not I'm not talking about the best midfielders of all time. Today I'm talking about one of them being a manager. And Xavi, Xavi is that manager. And he said at the time that he left, and I found this really interesting, that apparently that he, he thinks that being the Barcelona coach is actually impossible. And when you have somebody that is clearly competent, right? Somebody that's a good coach that has won a La Liga title at the helm of your club, that is saying they think it is impossible to manage your team. That is a problem, right? The reason he thinks it's impossible is the amount of expectations. And I'm assuming somewhere in his mind, it's the amount of expectations combined with the inability to acquire new players that are not coming through their academy. Granted, Barcelona seems to have be sitting on top of some sort of aquifer or, you know, there's like lime in the water or something that's causing everybody that grows up within 40 miles of the stadium to be basically a god at football, right? And I would love for scientists to look into that at some point. I mean, you're utilize they're utilizing that, obviously, with everything from having signed Pedri at whatever it was, 17, to Lamine Yamal, to there's that new kid whose name I can't remember, but I'm sure next year I'll be screaming it from the rooftops, right? They've got all these, they've got these guys coming through. They'll be fine. It's not like Barcelona is going to be mid-table or relegated. But they just, I mean, if you're trying to catch Real Madrid, who's about to add Mbappe and then Xabi Alonso the year after that as a coach, right? In the, they've got Jude Bellingham just coming into his prime. They've got Indrik joining in the offseason. It's not a competition. And I think Xavi realizes that the expectation is to beat that Real Madrid team consistently and win a lot of trophies. And for the next few years, that's just not going to be possible with the financial state and the, the quality of the squads, the two clubs. Xavi is Xavi. I don't want to mix these guys up. Xavi, Xavi Hernandez. We're just going to go with that. Uh, Xavi Hernandez is of the opinion that it's impossible. He said he was also taking a break for his mental health. The amount of pressure that was put on him was unreasonable. And a part of the reason it was impossible was because of the amount of media attention and pressure and, and kind of scrutiny that you face when you are managing at Barcelona. That was the reason that was impossible as well. But how awkward is it that Barcelona now accepted that initially and went, oh, we'll go find another manager at the end of the season. And, and after, you know, let's say two months of, of looking for a new manager, all they're coming back to Xavi and going, 
Uh, but let's see. It was it was the Athletic that reported this, and they had a quote that was interesting. And this is from Juan Laporta. It said, "Xavi knows what we want. It's his decision. What I'm going to do, as far as I can, is try and convince him to continue." Dude, that's just awkward. That's straight up and down, left and right, awkward. Right, because you totally accepted him leaving, and you were looking for another coach, and you opened up that market, and you you did a who wants me, and it was a one hundred percent no from the people that you also wanted, and now you're coming back to Xavi. Now I think Xavi's a great coach. I think he should stay at Barcelona for the next decade, but only the person in the arena gets to decide whether and what they want to put themselves through and what they want to handle in order to achieve their various things. He's already won the league at Barcelona. Like, sure, there's a lot of other great things out there to achieve, but if he's talking about a managerial career and what you can achieve achieve in a managerial career. Xavi Hernandez has already done a good job. He's already accomplished a good amount of stuff. I think it's kind of crazy that this is going on, but he may want to continue managing perhaps the same way that he was before he moved to Barcelona in a lower pressure environment. And that is where somebody named Tony Juan Martí comes in with a uh, with a report here, and I'm going to translate it for you. Ajax does not have a coach for next season, and one of the names being considered is Xavi Hernandez. From Amsterdam, they do not deny it, although there are more candidates on their list. Obviously, they're going to have to make sure Xavi leaves Barcelona, but Ajax is another team that likes to play a beautiful style of game, right? Positional play. This is something Xavi would be able to coach. He can get his teams playing beautifully, but at the same time, Ajax is a club that would be very happy to have somebody coming from Barcelona after having done a really good job at Barcelona for the most part. That I actually be over the moon to have somebody like Xavi come through the door. And maybe Xavi would be over the moon not having to deal with the kind of swell of insanity that seems to be whipped up around Barcelona recently. Barcelona used to be one of my favorite clubs, by the way. I'm just going to nip in the bud the fact that some people are going to be like, well, you just don't like Barcelona. No, I think the reason I'm so hard on Barcelona is because I loved La Masia. I love the way they grew their own team and coached them up to be the best. And that's what they did. I, I, I always sided with Barcelona over Real Madrid because I thought Real Madrid bought its success. Barcelona grew its success. That's the way I was introduced to it anyways when I was, uh, you know, a young wee lad in America learning about the sport for the first time. And the fact that Barcelona's kind of you teetered away from that, spent a ton of money and ended up in this debt that's kind of gotten all weird and they're chasing away somebody that was like the chosen son to be the manager of Barcelona for the next 15 to 20 years. And and now they're trying to beg him to come back that now that, the, you know, they've ended up with six more points. People got to trust the long game, man. You got to trust the process. Xavi is a good coach. You got to do whatever you can to make him feel comfortable. I don't think they did that. Now we're in a super awkward situation. And Ajax, they need the help. And they're realizing that they might be able to steal one of the preeminent coaches in the, in the whole world right now. They might be able to steal him for nothing. Tasty. I mean, good for them, I guess. Ajax needs it.